to have you right there yes watching us on your program cradle tv on nta my name is elizabeth acn okay i am not doing this alone i have my co-presenter with me and his name then thank you for coming up with us stay tuned as we bring you the young man the dynamic young man an erudite scholar and on today on our personality profile segment we have a very lovely young man not just lovely very energetic full of life intelligent and um we are going to talk politics yes with him yes this man is bringing his energy his intelligence everything in him to the people of Ika at the federal level and i'm talking about no other person but um comrade clement jimbo yes we'll be connecting him via zoom to tell us what and what and what he has to offer that is different from what those people there were doing before and i i want to join you so please connect with us so that we can speak with this young man well thank you for having me yes before we go into the main um event the main thing for the day we'd like to know your person who you are what you do do you have a family all that we want to hear from you well thank you so very much yes just like you've rightly introduced my name is clement jimbo and by the special grace of god i am the candidate for house of representatives 2023 to represent the people of abak ika and it may be federal consequences yeah, talking about my background, I'm, I'm happily married, the husband of one wife and four children. And uh, I'm professionally, I'm a quantity surveyor, and I manage and direct the company called Mentagon Nigeria Limited. So that is in a nutshell who Clement Jimbo is. Clement Jimbo is a man that believes so much in leadership. Because where leadership is, there is that development, there is direction, and there is progress. And where the, the leadership is not ease, there is chaos. So in the midst of chaos, we must find a way to slot in leadership where our country is in dire need. So that's basically what Clement Jimbo stands for. You are fully prepared to represent your people, the people of Ika, Itamebo, Abak, federal constituency at the national level. So looking at the three functions of the legislature, the oversight function, the legislative function, and the representative function, how will you figure into these different uh, functions to bring in the effective, the much desired, the much anticipated, effective representation to the people of Abak Ika, Etemekbo Federal Constituency that they have been yearning over, over the years. So what will you do differently, sir? Let's your people hear you today. All right, thank you very much for that wonderful question. I must say that is an, an intelligent question. Because you see, Dr. Almed, uh, Miles Monroe said something. He said, if you keep doing the same thing over and over and expect a different result, you are suffering from mild insanity. It's garbage in, garbage out. So if we have not been satisfied with the development, with the representation that we have seen, in my federal constituency, which is a back Ika and it make me. then it, it behoves on us and all the electorates in this affected constituency to do a change in their input so that we can equally expect a different output. Talking about differently what Clement Jimbo will bring to the table is very clear. We are running on a tripod. The first is effective representation. And I know a lot of people have overused the word effective representation, but I'm going to break it down so that we understand what it means or what Clement Jimbo is bringing to the table where effective representation is concerned. If you look at the position of a governor, for example, it's just the position. But embedded in that position are responsibilities that the governor must live out every day. So without which that position becomes a nonsense. So we are going to represent the people effectively. How do I mean by that? If you look at the current Ninth Assembly, Ninth National Assembly, where a lot of legislation has been made and passed into law. Example is the PIB, Petroleum Industrial Bill, which is already an act now. The next one is the Electricity Bill, which is already an act now. So the question is, how much of this knowledge has been brought to the people that the current representation, rep representative member, 
is, is, is doing there. How much of the people have he, has he introduced this legislation in the nine, nine, nine assembly to? They are not aware. They don't know. So when we talked about effective representation, we are going to galvanize input from the grassroots, from our constituency, bring it into the green chamber, and speak the minds of the people for the entire Nigeria to know, and equally solicit for what they are demanding, and bring it back to the people. So there is going to be a communication. How do I mean by that? There is going to be a toe and fro communication, because if you must represent the people, you must take input from the people, impute it into the National Assembly, get input from the National Assembly, and flow it back to the people, that is number one, effective representation. Number two, what we are running on is called shared prosperity. What do I mean by that? Nigeria, the Constitution of Nigeria, the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999 Constitution, as amended, clearly classifies all of us in Nigeria as citizens. We are citizens. There is no upper class, middle class, and lower class. We are not called the masses. We are called citizens because as a citizen of Nigeria, you have rights. We have rights. And what are those basic rights? The right for basic amenities of life, accommodation, shelter, food, clothing. These are basic fundamental human rights. And when we talked about shared prosperity, that is what we are talking about. There is no going to be a difference where I am the house member representing them and they are my subject. No. In terms of Evenly distribution of wealth that we are going to bring to the table. We talked about constituency project. Of course, constituency project that is allocated to every federal house member is for the people, is not for the house member. Therefore, what is for the people will be given to the people and equitably distribute them across every person that the constituency affected. All right, sir. So we know that the one of the major challenges in a election in a, your candidacy will be vote buying. Mm -hmm. Number one, number two, how to reach out to your electorate who are yearning for change and effective representations. And you see that in the last 2019 uh, election, your party lost out woefully. The All Progressive Congress lost out. It's a Pabio failed election. So this time around, what time? People are still talking about that Pabio is not coming down to campaign. But let us hear from you. How is Pabio prepared for this? And what about other of your candidates for the State House of Assembly, the Senate, is Pabio, and the rest? Talk a little about uh, the potentials of uh, other candidates. We know of you. Pabio State. In my senatorial district, Ikori Ben Senatorial District, also known as known as Akwaibu Northwest Senatorial District, where we have the very best, a man who has been a two-term governor of Akwaibu State from 2007 to 2015, a man who rose from there to go into the green, the, the red chamber, contested the Senate seat, and he won convincingly. He went into the Senate, uh, Senate chamber and the, the rules of the House were suspended for once to make a first-timer, the Senate minority leader, which has never happened. That history is yet to be broken. So then he rose from there to became, and became a minister of the Federal Republic, talking about the minister of Niger Delta. And he didn't just end there. He moved a step further to become the presidential aspirant. In the, in the platform that is not a mean feed, the All Progressives Congress. Then, of course, he, he slid back and became the Senate candidate, senatorial candidate in that very senatorial district. So, Akbabio, His Excellency, Gospel of Akbabio, does not need any further introduction. He has seen it all, he knows it all. He's a grand commander, the way I choose to call him. The people love him naturally, organically. He does not need to buy votes for people to vote for him. Just blush what happened in 2019. Of course, we are all here, we knew what happened. That APC in Igor the Benes District won the election convincingly. But for the fact that there were some systems, personalities, that were not in tune with the structure of his face, with his boldness, with the audacity, to command on common transformation anywhere he's found, decided to team up. And of course, he had to allow this life. And of course, if you read, the judgment of the appeal court that sentenced the electoral officer that mainstream all what transpired. He said that the election, somebody that did what, somebody that did what's happening in the Central District, 
is worthy to go to jail. And that person is cooling off right now in the jail. So it therefore means election was done in Equal Defense in the Trial District. APC won. But of course, the whims and caprices of the people that mainstream everything, that, con that, con that control almost everything, decided to do otherwise. That is why God will always vindicate the just. God rose him to become a, the next minister of the Federal Republic. And during his stay, we saw what happened. The forensic audit, which he mainstream, is there. So many people that abandoned the Niger Delta from contract that we awarded to them now found their way back to the site to make sure those projects were completed. We saw even in the Senate hearing where he was asked to give account of what happened. He expressed himself so eloquently with facts and figures that even the Senate president, whoever that was presiding over there, had to tell him to switch off his mic. Those are the kind of men we are looking for. And of course, if you know the Senate, the Senate is not a place where you do a lot of experiments. You need a man that will go in there and move at a wall, get go. He knows the onions. And of course, I wouldn't be missing what if he's not going there to become the next Senate president because he has it all. He knows it all. So in the Economic Medicine Trial District, I'm very convinced that every candidate that has emerged from the House of Assembly to the National Assembly, which is the, can the Senate and the House of Representatives, are going to win a landslide. And of course, we cannot lose sight of the fact that we have a very big fish. I'm talking about the governorship candidate of the APC in Akwa Ibom State, Ogbonwa Kanimo Odofi. And of course, a man of that nature, coming from the private sector where he is, and reading from what he has already done, the one that struck, struck, struck me very much is how a man will pull over a billion naira to build a hostel for a, stu a student in Ikorok Bade, in the Akwa Ibom State University. It's there. It is not government money. Just like me, Clement Jimbo is doing all this. Not because he has benefited a dime from government, but because we believe in this country, we believe in a quiet home state. So we are staking everything because we know leadership is definite. Leadership is deliberate. You cannot afford to allow those who have not been tested in the private sector to manage the microscopism of whatever they are managing, their family, their businesses, paying salaries and keeping afloat to come into the mainstream of politics where billions and human resources are entrusted into their hands. They must be trusted, they must be proven. And that person I cannot fear has passed all that record. So with him, in the governorship seat of the Kwaibom said I can convincingly, with my ten fingers and my ten toes, to tell you a Kwaibom will be in safe hands. On the last note, you have not addressed the people of Aba, Kika, Etmebo, on the issue of vote buying, should in case your supporters who are willingly to give you the mandate to represent them. People came in all of the sudden from anywhere with money bags and tell them give your vote. So what's your message to the people in case this happened that they are well prepared to give you their mandate? So what if the people come up or anybody, an emergency philanthropist come up with the choice of promising them even an air? So what do you want them to do and what's your message to your teaming uh, supporters out there? All right, thank you very much. I'm um, equally impressed by that very question. The first thing we need to know that vote buying is against the law. It's not just vote buying, it's vote selling. Both the seller and the buyer. There is no law in the Electoral Act 2022 and the Nigerian, League, Nigerian Constitution 1999 as I mean they support any. So vote buying is against the law and it should be discouraged at whatever level. And if you look at the antecedent, what vote buying has brought us, I, I, I always look, use this example. For example, the, the electorate that brought the, the, the current governor, Governor Domi Manuel, to power, we have about 500,000 votes. So if somebody decides to pull out 10,000 naira to pay to 500,000 voters, do you know how much that is? How much is the basic salary of a governor? So it does not add up. So anybody that brings out money to buy votes is not representing your interest. And let me say this, sir. Vote buying is wrong. It's criminal. And it should not be allowed to have a space in a legal process, electoral process, sorry. Because if you take your mind back to what Lee Kuan Yew said in one of his books titled from third world to first. 
And if a man of that nature speaks, I should believe him, and you should believe him. This is a man, when Malaysia, when Singapore was breaking out from Malaysia, they asked him, what are you going to do? You don't have anything, you are breaking from Malaysia. Even against the advice, the advice from the UK, they said, look, he calls his people and said, we are going to be good. Let us bond together, let us bring unity. And he made a profound statement, which I want us to pay a very close attention. He said, we cannot afford to forget that public order, personal security, economic prosperity and progress are not the natural order of things. They depend on ceaseless effort and attention from an honest government that the people must elect. The underlining word here is the people. So any government, any leader, any senator, any representative that is not elected by the people will not be answerable to the people. It therefore behoves on the electorate to take their destinies in their hands. Thank you so much for being a part of this program on the Cradle TV showing on NTA. Yes, we had a very, very lively and um, energetic guest in the house today. And I'm sure you were here when he was talking on what and what he has on the ground for the good people of Abak, Itamipo and Ika. Yes, and uh, he is the candidate, yes, on the platform of All Progressives Congress APC, vying to represent the people of Abak, Itamipo and Ika. We thank you so much for coming here, sir. Yes, on behalf of my co-presenter, yes, Emmanuel Ufa. Be yourself, don't print. Put the right candidates for a change, for a better Nigeria, for your better future. Hold it tight. Go out there, vote, and don't sell your conscience.